Well, hello and welcome back to Noah's Window. Today we want to go again to the book of 2 Corinthians, where Paul is writing this letter to the church at Corinth. And uh, interesting topic today, and again, we're just extracting a little piece of this in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, so I encourage you to go get your Bible and read through this whole passage, not just this one, because actually chapter 6 is referring back to chapter 5, which we just talked about. So um, he talked about the gift of salvation. And in chapter 6, Paul says, um, As God's partners, we, and that would be Paul and his co-workers, beg you, Corinthians, not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says, At just the right time I heard you, on the day of salvation I helped you. So here's our key verse. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. So, you know... We always say, or one of the sayings we have in our culture is, timing is everything. And if, if we wonder when is the right time to get our hearts right with God, that would be today. Yeah. You know, when we hear the term salvation, especially those of us who grew up in evangelical churches, we mm-hmm. immediately rush to define salvation as regeneration, God giving us the new birth. And I, right. I think that is what's referenced here. But it's important for us to recognize that in scripture the term salvation almost always means rescue Mm -hmm. and we certainly see Mm -hmm. that in the uh the sense of god rescuing us from the kingdom of darkness and translating us into the kingdom of light but given that definition of rescue for salvation why would anyone want to put rescue off that's a good question you know because when, when someone recognizes that he or she is in peril they won't rescue immediately right i mean you know that's why we have sirens on ambulances so that they can get through traffic and, and rescue someone quickly. So I think that's what the scripture is talking about here. And, and when the camera was off, you and I were talking about another text in the book in of Hebrews, Hebrews yeah. uh, very similar to that, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, where God says, Today is the day of salvation. Mm-hmm. Now is the accepted time. And, uh, you know, it, well, actually, that's what we have here in Second Corinthians. In Hebrews, it says, don't harden your heart. Right. So, And, and then in, in, in Hebrews, it's referring to the children of Israel. So I think I know where you're going here. Mm-hmm. Because they were in a rebellious situation. They were already God's people, but they were rebelling against him. Well, and they had a habit of, of putting off mm-hmm. God's rescue. I mean, maybe they just wanted to continue on a little bit longer in a lifestyle they knew that God couldn't bless because they recognized mm. if they did seek the rescue of God, they were going to have to be serious with God. And you certainly mm. see that in the Old Testament. You see that, you know, b- before the Israelites went into captivity. But I don't I don't think it's just the Israelites. I, th- I think it's just human nature. Yes. I mean, you remember when uh, the plague of the frogs came to Egypt mm-hmm. and uh, Pharaoh was begging Moses to get rid of the frogs. And remember Moses said, when do you want me to when do you want the frogs to go away and pharaoh said tomorrow tomorrow one more night with the frogs <laughs> right so <laughs> that's what i see here why would anyone want to put off rescue and and you and i both know of stories where individuals intended to be saved mm-hmm. they intended to accept christ but for some reason they put it they put that off i i don't think i'll ever forget many years ago back when i was in when we were in fort worth uh, we had a vacation Bible school in, in our church and there were kids that came from the neighborhood and it was a very impoverished neighborhood around the church uh, who did not go to church and so I remember going back into the house to visit uh, going back to the neighborhood to visit the house of, uh, of a little girl who came to vacation Bible school and was talking to her mother and her mother told me that she was not a believer and I remember dad made that call with me and so I got to the place where I asked her if she would like to accept Christ today and she said yes and just at that moment the phone rang mm-hmm. and she went to answer the phone and when she came back she said you know I think I'm gonna wait a little bit longer and remember in those days we had a little bus that was given mm-hmm. to us yes. and we would go mm-hmm. around and pick up kids and I never will forget we picked up a little kid from the neighborhood and he asked me if I'd heard the story mm-hmm. of that woman who had been shot and killed and I mm-hmm. couldn't help but think about the week before when she had just come to the place mm-hmm. where she said yes I will accept Christ and the phone interrupted and then she put it off no one should ever put off no. the rescue God's and of rescue. course Satan wants to interrupt yes getting our relationship right with the Lord and if we are Christians there's no reason to postpone 
uh, getting our, our lifestyle in line with God's will because that's where the life of blessing is, right. is to get our life in line with Him. Yeah, I'm going to go off on a tangent here for just a second, Marilis, but I come right back. I know at New Spring, Gibbon, you know, we've we've had over 7,000 people attend quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Multiple l- weeks, Multiple yes. weeks now. I mean, church is growing rapidly. And one of the things that we've had to ask for is for interruptions. Yes. To, to be quelled. You know, we've said, you know, make sure your phone is off. If you have to take a phone call, go outside. And mm-hmm. if you do go outside, you need to stay outside and watch the sermon online or watch it on one of the oh, television on the mm-hmm. screens outside. I mean, we've had to ask for these things. And it's not that we're trying to be, uh, you know, harsh in any way. It's just people are making the most important decisions of their lives. And, mm-hmm. you know, Satan uses interruptions. He uses distractions. Absolutely. Absolutely. But anyway, like I said, that's a that's a side trail, but not really so much. I mean, the Bible is saying today is the day. Don't let anything stop you from accepting God's rescue. And, and interruptions and procrastinations, as we all know, really just contributes to keeping us continuing down the same road. Mm-hmm. And and intentions don't don't get you anywhere. No. You know, um, I think we all fight that in our depravity to some ex- extent. You know, whatever it is you're intending to do on a particular day, and uh, <laughs> you, know, you can watch workout videos on YouTube, and if all you do is watch them. Yeah, they, they they don't do you any good. <laughs> well, I was a friend of mine was talking about how that you know the day before you start a diet, you know, typically he would he would really eat a lot of stuff that he shouldn't eat because he's going to start the diet tomorrow. He said, "I'm really good at that last day before the diet <laughs> <laughs> with all the plans, but yeah, not right, going yeah. yeah executing it." But here's the thing, and, and we've talked about this before, but once we step out in faith. God will help us. Sometimes things might seem too hard, or, or maybe we have the wrong concept of what that would be like. But God's going to help us in living this lifestyle that honors Him, and He's certainly going to help us. You know, we used to say in the old days when we had an invitation, that first step in in uh, going yes. down the aisle, going making that decision to accept the Lord, that first step is is the only hard one. After that, the Lord carries us through. And I think it's just making the decision, but actually moving on it. Um, that makes the difference, and so we hope we don't we don't postpone that decision. One more thing before we leave this topic, uh, we've spoken about this text in the context of salvation from sin and 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 judgment, but I think also too there there's an element of this that's written to Christians because we are going to be in scenarios where we're going to need God's rescue mm-hmm. in our lives, mm-hmm. not not to save us from hell, not to you know not to make us a member of God's family. But we just need God to rescue us from the situation that we're in. Yes, and oftentimes, yes. I think Christians have a reluctance to get serious about asking God for that because, mm-hmm. as I said, I think a lot of times there are Christians that just don't want to change what they're doing. There's a stubbornness there. That's right. And and there's all kinds of rescue that we need, and we should never hesitate to call on the Lord. Yeah, because Paul's not real clear who he's, I mean, who the Holy Spirit's having him write to in, in yeah. chapter 6. And I think he's just giving a general context. If, if a person's lost and needs to be saved, today's the day. If a person's a Christian and they need God to come in and work in their lives, today's the day. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, today's always the day to do the right thing. That's right. It's never tomorrow. Well, I hope this is a message that we can all take to heart wherever it finds us, whatever situation we're in. And I hope that'll encourage your heart today. And on that note, Mark, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Lord, I pray that you'll help us to identify uh, with the help of your Holy Spirit any stubbornness or rebellion that's in our own hearts so that we might enjoy the rescue that you have for us, the freedom, uh, the help. And so, God, I pray that you would help us as David prayed, that you would search our hearts and see if there's any rebellious way in us. Thank you, Father, that you do rescue your people. And we're so thankful that you're a today God, uh, that you are in this moment, uh, no matter whether we're talking about uh, this moment in our individual lives or our families or in our nation, we're just thankful that you right here you're the immediate god and we give you praise and glory for that in jesus name i pray amen amen well thank you for joining us this week here on noah's window and we'll look forward to seeing you again next week that's right we'll be back on monday god bless